Having established a basic understanding of graphs, the new thing we're going to do here, which you may not have done in Foundations 1, is we're going to analyze algorithms that involve graphs. We'll have several of these following this unit, including minimum spanning tree, the shortest path algorithm, and maximum flow, all of which require understanding of graph theory to analyze. So we're going to start practicing with that here. Let's look at this code. In this code, we define a variable k, and then we're looping over every vertex. Notice we're doing a for each loop there. This is an allowable construct in our pseudocode. Then we have a for each loop here for each edge incident on that vertex. We're looping over every vertex and then checking for each of those vertices all of the edges adjacent to that. We're going to begin here by actually computing what is the value of k. So every single iteration, I add one to k. So rather than saying that this costs c like we normally would, what if we pretended instead that it cost one? This would allow us to compute the value of k. So k is equal to the sum, hmm. I have a for loop, but I, and I wanna write that as a sum, but it's a little strange. Let's introduce some variables to help us out. So let's say n is the number of vertices. And just for completeness, let's say m is the number of edges. With those, let's try and write down the summation. The first loop here is going from over every single vertex. So if I want to express that maybe in similar letters even, I could write that as from the, the sum from i equals one to n, the sum over every single vertex. And then I'm going over every edge incident on that vertex. How many edges are incident on it? Well, we know we have a mathematical expression for that. This loop iterates the degree of vi times. So I could write this as the sum from j equals 1 to the degree of vi of whatever the cost on the inside is. Here I'm not analyzing the cost of doing this. I'm analyzing the value of k. So every single iteration has a cost of 1 that I am adding to k. Now let's analyze the summation. This is k is equal to the sum from i equals one to n of that inner summation just collapses to the degree of vi times one, which is the degree of vi. And then by the handshaking lemma that we discussed before, this must equal two times m. So that is the value of k upon the termination of this function. Now let's discuss the runtime. It might be very natural to say, well, it's obviously two m. However, what if we never enter this loop? So suppose we had a graph with no edges. This is a valid graph. Graphs do not require edges. The set of edges could be the empty set. In that case, we would never enter here, in which case k would be equal to zero. So this works over there, but it does not work for our runtime because we would still need to loop over every single vertex. And we have not captured that idea with this expression for k. So let's suppose that instead of costing one, like we just said, let's suppose instead that it cost a constant amount of time here. It might be natural to say, well, I could write this as t of n is equal to the sum from i equals one to n of the sum from j equals one to the degree of v i of c. There's a couple of issues though. Notice our expression for k didn't have n in it. So maybe instead we write this as n comma m to represent that there are two notions of size for a graph, the number of vertices and the number of edges. And we want to capture both of those. However, if this happened to collapse and there were no vertices, this does not accurately represent what happens. So instead of this summation, let us instead analyze the following summation. No matter what, determining if there are any edges here, you must access some data structure and potentially parse through and determine if it's empty. Therefore, we always have a constant time plus that loop. Normally we've ignored the fact that we have these other constant time operations like setting up this for loop because they did not affect our runtime. However, here it's possible that our size or number of iterations of that loop is just zero on every iteration. So we must be more careful. Now, Having done this, I can distribute the summation and have I have the sum from i equals one to n 
of C plus the sum from J equals 1 to the degree of VI of C. And I forgot a summation, so let's fix that really quick. I should have plus the sum from I equals 1 to N. And I know what this is going to converge to because it's the exact same as what I had up here, except I have a C inside instead of a 1. So the first summation is nice and easy. That's just C times N. Plus the second summation is 2CM. Now, notice I have the two different notions of size here. And therefore, the runtime is in theta of N plus M. We cannot further simplify that because we do not know how those two things relate. Similar to when we saw hash tables, when we had a notion of the number of elements and the size of the hash table, we get a similar thing occurring here. And you can expect that for graph algorithms. So this is our runtime for our algorithm that we have here. We can complicate this in many ways by adding more loops or making the insides more complicated, but those will be things we will see on the homework. As a final thought, I have included many, many more things to here at the bottom if you want to see more definitions. We may use some of these later. I will try to include them as we see them, but we have many definitions and some theorems down here at the bottom. There will also be some links to two algorithms that you should have studied in Foundations 1 in case you want to see them. Those are depth first search and breadth first search. Those are worth knowing and it's worth reviewing them in case you've forgotten them. There are slides that I use in Foundations 1 that will be uploaded and I mentioned that in this video so that you actually go through and do that. So this is our last thing on graph algorithms, nice short unit. We have some homework where you're going to have to analyze some problems like this and it's going to combine with some of our previous discussion of data structures. And we'll see that when we analyze Future graph algorithms such as minimum spanning tree and shortest path, we will analyze code similar to the code in the homework.